welcome back to my channel if you're new here big welcome to you I'm happy to have you here and I hope you stick around and watch some more of my videos and see what I'm up to today's gonna be a different video it's a video I haven't done before it's not like it's a new idea not that kind of different but it's a video I haven't done before but I've seen plenty of them on YouTube and I think they are kind of fun so I thought I would do a products that I've hit pen on video today. So I do have quite a few products, mostly eyeshadows, which is probably not that surprising given that eyeshadows are smaller and you use different eyeshadows and well yeah, it's it's easier to hit pen on eyeshadows. And also I have the Pandos eyeshadows project and I did a eyeshadow panning project last year so I've been like focusing on hitting panel eyeshadows and not so much on other products. But I'm going to start with the not eyeshadow products. Um, so if you're interested in seeing which products I have hit pan on and the products that I kind of love enough to hit pan on, then keep on watching. And if you like it, keep please give it a thumbs up. That would be a lot of fun for me. And subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start with the one that inspired me to do this video. So I actually just hit pan on this and I have it in a different compact than what it usually comes in. I have this in my project pan and I didn't reach my goal to hit pan on it during my project pan but it didn't take long before my MAC Sculpt powder blush had the tiniest little bit of pen. Can you even see that? It's so small. I started using it a little bit in my brows, started using it to contour my nose, which I normally don't really do that much, which meant that I was focusing a little more in the same spot. And then while I was contouring my cheeks today, I noticed this little thing. And I think it's really exciting. I don't really hit pan on these products that often. So when I do, I get excited. And I know that once I have this little baby pan, it will start expanding. And at some point, this product will look well loved and used, which it is, obviously. I really like this as a contour powder. I have others, like bronzers and stuff, that I really like as well. Um, if you want me to do a video on bronzers for different types of, uh, like different types of colors of bronzers, I do have a lot of bronzers and contour products, so I could do a video showing a little bit which ones I use for what purpose kind of that could be a video in the future but I also have another bronzer that I've hit pan on which is because I love it so much uh, it's the Becca sunlit bronzer in Capri Coast and this is a really soft bronzer so look at that pan that is oops that is huge uh, but yeah it's a really soft shimmery bronzer so it was quite easy to hit pan on and it's also how many it's 7.1 grams of product which is 0 0.25 ounces which is not that much um, so it's not really that deep in the pan either uh, so it didn't take that long to hit pan on well it took a while but once I had hit pan the pan started expanding like crazy and it's also really thin around the edges so I'm thinking this will be in a project pan sometime soon so that I can actually finish a bronzer this year. Such a nice bronzer. I do really like the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. Is that what it's called? Like the powder highlighters? It's kind of a similar formula, really soft and buttery and just it's beautiful. But you do have to like a shimmery bronzer in order to like that one. The next one is actually a blush and it's the only blush that I've ever hit pan on, I think. I can't think of any other blushes that I've hit pan on. I don't have any other blushes with pan in them at the moment, which is why this is the only one I'm going to show you. Uh, this is the Too Faced Love Flush Long Lasting 16 Hour Blush in Baby Love. Looks like this. Uh, so this one also has quite a bit of pan at this point in time. I do, I have one more of these. I do really like these blushes and this color is just, it's the perfect kind of neutral 
blush tone. Um, and I watched Kelly Goosh's video about hitting pan on a low flush blush and she really struggled with hitting pan on it. And I was like, how is that even possible? I feel like I hit pan on this one really fast because it's not that deep in the pan. And also the pan is kind of big. So this is 6 grams of product. One, no, 0 0.21 ounces. Um, but it's kind of covering a bigger area it has a bigger pen so I felt like it wasn't that I didn't have to like go through such a thick layer but I must have used this a ton I think I had it in a like unofficial project pen for quite a while and um, I was using it pretty much every day for a long time but I do still really love it just great blush I don't know if they make these anymore Maybe they do. I've been struggling to find. I would like to get another color, but we don't have Too Faced in Norway anyway, so I'm gonna just love the ones that I have. And then um, a couple of the eyeshadows that you've seen recently, if you've seen any of my Pendles eyeshadow projects or project pants, stuff like that, you've seen the next two eyeshadows before. This one is, I just have to quickly check that I have the right shade name. Yep, this is Colourpop I owe you and it has a pretty nice pen now. This is just an orange nice shade to use in the crease. I use this one in the crease and over my lid and just absolutely everywhere. Um, I'd use it 51 times. No, 46 times to a pen on it. So, good times. It took a while but it's really satisfying once you are able to pan on my shadow and Colourpop singles are really not easy to pan on, especially not the matte ones. Um, so it took a while, but that just makes the happiness to finish it even bigger, I guess. And the other one that I have um, in my project pan that you've seen multiple times is Mac Orb. This is actually a repressed eyeshadow that I've hit pan on again. And I had this in my project pen, didn't finish it, but I'm still working on it. And hopefully that will be the first eyeshadow I finish this year. And probably the only one, too, if I'm going to be honest. Eyeshadows just take forever, and I'm not really... My goal is not really to finish a bunch of eyeshadows, but just to get use out of them. And once I've hit pen on eyeshadow, that makes me happy because then that means um, that I used it. A lot and that is kind of the goal so it's just a measurable um, type of goal setting what am I trying to say it's a nice way to measure how much you actually use something so, uh, some eyeshadows that I had pan on in my seven pants in seven months project last year was first of all the Mac this is called the sweet yeah sweet ice from the Duchess Quad, which was a collaboration with Sharon Osborne. It's this one right here. I use this as a inner corner highlight, brow bone highlight, face highlight, everything for months. I got kind of sick of it, but I did hit band. It's actually a beautiful um, highlight shade, but I don't really use this anymore. Uh, it's This quad is getting really old. I'm mainly holding on to it for sentimental reasons. But it is kind of cool that I was able to hit pan on it because MAC eyeshadows as well, really hard to hit pan on, really hard to finish. That's the orb shadow I've been working on for I don't know how long. But um, it's just nice to know that something that is, you know that it's going to be a challenge once you make it, it's just extra satisfying. Uh, and then one that is slightly easier to Hey, pattern, I think it's the Huda Beauty Obsessions palette. This is Mauve Obsessions, and this is a palette that I've used quite a bit. I have at least one more shade in here, it's close to having pan. The one that I do have pan on is this matte pink shade. For some reason, there are a lot, a lot of matte eyeshadows in here, which is surprising because a lot of matte eyeshadows are a lot harder to hit pan on than shimmers, but I guess I've just chosen a lot of matte eyeshadows to work on and also in the Pandos eyeshadows project if you've seen that uh, a lot of matte, matte eyeshadows so I don't know why that is but um, 
yeah, another matte eyeshadow there. Uh, but this is, these are smaller pens and um, not that hard to pen on. Also, I do really love pink eyeshadow, so I could use this quite a bit and I can just use a pink eyeshadow in the crease and then change up what I have on my lid. Today I'm actually wearing the MAC Rose pigment, which is such an underrated product. It's beautiful. I just put some glitter glue on underneath and then a little bit of orange in my crease and then just packed on the rose pigment. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but in real life, it looks beautiful. I have another matte shade to show you. This is from my Kathleen Lights Dream Street palette by Colourpop. And I do have some of the shades that are actually missing in here. But the shade that I had pan on is this one called Magical. And it's just, it's very similar to the first color of eyeshadow I showed you. It's like a light orange shade. So I can use, I use this all over my crease and just kind of use it as a transition shade. But this one had little white, like, clumps or spots in it. Um, which I read about, it's like pigment that doesn't really get mixed in. So it's, no, it's pigment that doesn't really mix in properly so that some of the eyeshadow or some of the ingredients in the eyeshadow kind of clumps up and ends up being little white dots in the eyeshadow, which was a little annoying. Um, and it also made the eyeshadow a little lighter than it could have been, which might have helped me hit that on it, but I feel like the white clumps is just not what I want to put on my eyes. So it's kind of weird, but I've seen on the internet that it's probably a pretty common um, problem for some eyeshadows, uh, and it's not in any way like harmful or it doesn't change the eyeshadow that much, but uh, it's just a little annoying. Also, it looks a little strange. But I did hit pan on it nevertheless, so I'm happy about that. Now that I have all of the products in front of me, I can. it's kind of fun to see that I've actually hit pan on quite a few products, and I tend to forget about that. I tend to like forget that I actually do sometimes hit pan on things, even though I usually say that I'm super bad at it. The next one comes from my Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. I haven't used this in such a long time. It's actually another matte eyeshadow, and uh, it's Chaser, which is this one right here. So it's a really like easy to wear shade because it's just a light beige shade. Kind of has a satin finish almost. Um, it was really nice, and also it was easy to just kind of um, work on the one of the ends, uh, which is kind of nice with Urban Decay eyeshadows. But Urban Decay eyeshadows are hard to hit pan on. Like, I've heard other people say that as well. Um, they are tightly pressed. They are pretty deep in the pants. And um, the people that have, like, successfully finished an entire Naked palette, like the Naked Original or Naked 2 or something, I'm impressed. That takes dedication, so much hard work, and... Well, I spent months trying to hit pan on just that one eyeshadow, and that was a, an easy shade to use every day. I just, some of these darker shades, I would not be able to finish those, but oh well. I'm not even attempting, so hats off for you people who actually do. Then I have the last one, which also came from my Seven Pants, Seven Pants in Seven Months project last year. This is uh, the Imani MUA palette from Makeup Geek, and the shade that I hit pan on is beautiful. This is Luna, and I'm pretty sure this came. This is um one of the foiled eyeshadow eyeshadows. I think that it came as a single afterwards. Uh, and maybe it still exists like in the new range. If it does, uh, I totally recommend picking it up because Luna is gorgeous. I got a little sick of it because I used it every day for such a long time, but um, it's really beautiful and um, 
I haven't reached for this palette in a long time as well and it's starting to get kind of old. So that's that. But I did hit ban on it and I'm happy about that. And that is actually everything. Just kidding. I just remembered I have a pan on a highlighter actually, which is kind of exciting. This is from the um, Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Glow Palette and the shade, so it's the uh, Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed, that's what it's actually called, that I was talking about earlier that I really like the formula of. This is the shade Pearl. I have a pan on it right in the middle. I use this shade so much for a while. Uh, it's just a really like white highlighter, but it works well on my fair skin. I also really like the Champagne Pop one, which I'm kind of close to hitting that on, but I would definitely consider getting Pearl in a single because this palette is getting hella old and I should probably not use it. Oh well, I haven't used it in forever, I just kind of keep it and at some point I might purchase Pearl again because I really like the formula of these and I don't really feel like I need to have a ton of highlighters but it's fun to be able to change it up a little bit so those are actually all of the products and this video is already long and rambly enough so I'm just gonna quickly finish it by saying I hope you're all doing well and I will hopefully see you soon but I have to admit it might be a while um, I kind of feel like I need a break from everything so if you don't see me in a few weeks uh, I'm sorry but it's just a lot going on so I hope you're all safe and I hope that you are all happy and I'll see you in my next video